The IDF's action in the Gaza Strip has become a matter of global scrutiny, and its conduct has been inviting criticism from various bodies of the world. The Independent Task Force on the Application of National Security Memorandum 20 to Israel, comprised of subject matter experts, leveled some serious allegations against Israel. The watchdog group alleges that Israel is violating international law and human rights in Gaza. Task Force Chair Noura Erekat, a human rights attorney and academic, pointed out findings that in some military operations, Israel did not identify even military targets or even bother to attempt a justification. Our findings are striking. Though Israel has attributed the 34,000 Palestinian casualties, 70% of whom are women and children, to alleged human shielding by Hamas, we found that in 11 out of the 16 targeting incidents we analyzed, Israel did not even identify a military target or attempt to justify the strike. The panel's report also implied that the U.S.-Israel alliance comes into play every time there is a matter of concern, which would want the U.S.'s immediate rebuke of Israel. And that Israel's reporting on compliance with international law and human rights always comes with an element of skepticism. On the treatment of Israel, in my experience, Israel gets special treatment that no other country gets. When it comes to Israel, there is certainly room for skepticism about the administration's reporting. The National Security Memorandum 20, NSM 20, adopted by President Joe Biden, directs the Department of State to seek assurances from partners involved in conflict and receiving U.S. military grant assistance that they would abide by U.S. and international law and also requires the Departments of State and Defense to report to Congress within 90 days on the extent to which such partners are abiding by their assurances. The U.S. State Department, however, has denied substantiating the findings of the report. Um, I can't speak to these comments. I haven't seen them um, or can't really speak to uh, this individual um, and their uh, what their role may have been here at the State Department. What I can say uh, uh, unequivocally is that we apply uh, the principles um, and guidelines that are outlined um, in clear legislation when it comes to the security relationships we have with countries around the world, uh, including Israel, uh, consistently. Uh, I will also note that when it comes to uh, the appropriate use of um, American uh, security assistance, we also apply the principles and guidelines um, uh, as it relates to those consistently with countries uh, across the board. Uh, simultaneously, we have a number of measures and efforts in place when it comes to um, ensuring that there is uh, compliance with international humanitarian law. We've talked about a number of those levers um, from this briefing room, uh, and we apply the tenants laid out in those measures consistently across the board with countries um, uh, uh, across the board. There is no such thing as uh, special or preferential treatment when it comes to um, the implementation and enforcement of what we believe to be uh, U.S. law. Uh, Meanwhile, the U.S. is building pressure on Israel and Hamas to reach a deal that would free some Israeli hostages and bring a ceasefire in the war in Gaza. In a call with Benjamin Netanyahu on Sunday, Joe Biden reiterated his clear position as Israel plans to invade Gaza's southernmost city of Rafah, despite global concern for more than one million Palestinians sheltering there. During discussions between Biden and Netanyahu, plans to increase the delivery of humanitarian aid to Gaza were addressed, including preparations to open new northern crossings starting this week. The US president emphasized the importance of sustained and enhanced progress in aid delivery coordinated with humanitarian organizations. White House National Security Spokesman John Kirby said that efforts to broker a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas are ongoing. It certainly will help increase the volume of aid that's getting into Gaza. But nothing can replace, quite frankly nothing, can replace the ground routes and the trucks that are getting in.